This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. The bye week is over and with six games left in this transition season, the Old Dominion football team begins the second half of its year tomorrow against another ACC opponent. The University of Pittsburgh lost to Virginia Tech last week and the Panthers hope to redeem themselves with a victory over the Monarchs. Is ODU up to the task? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, you had a week off to get refreshed to look ahead to this tough second half of right. the season. Your feelings heading into tomorrow night's game against Pittsburgh. Couldn't have used a better word, Bruce. Refreshed. Everybody's refreshed. Everybody's excited to be back uh, playing at Heinz Field, home of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin, as you and I were talking about, uh, Hampton Road's own Mike Tomlin. Uh, our kids are so excited to go there, Bruce. This is an NFL venue. We're playing a team in Pittsburgh that's an outstanding team. This will be the best team we've played so far. But to get that time off, Bruce, and get everybody back refreshed, excited, can't wait to get started. You know, that's an interesting point. Let's be a little more specific. Mm -hmm. I've seen Pitt and their right. excellent quarterback, Tom Savage, mm -hmm. a couple of times this year. Right. Is this indeed the toughest opponent you've ever faced in ODU football history? I think it is, Bruce. We played 54 games. We're, we're 42 and 12, 30 games over 500. Played some great teams. As you know, the CAA, outstanding competition. East Carolina was a really good team. They're 5-1 and one right now. Um, Maryland, very good team. They're 5-1 and one right now. Pittsburgh's only losses, Bruce, are to number six, Florida State, who plays Clemson Saturday night in a huge game. Uh, Florida State's number five in the nation, and to Virginia Tech, who's six and one right now, won six in a row, number 20 in the nation. So they're three and two with those two losses. I think they're the most complete team we've played, Bruce. Very good on special teams. Excellent quarterback. You and I have talked about Tom Savage. He's an NFL prospect, a quarterback. And then defensively, very good defensively. Aaron Donald, their defensive tackle, leads the nation in sacks right now for an interior D lineman. He had two against Virginia Tech last week. So they're a solid team in all three phases. So a lot of national attention when you pull off the upset tomorrow night. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I like. <laughs> How about an injuries update? Let's start with quarterback ta uh, Taylor Heineke, yeah. who suffered that concussion against right. Liberty. Is Taylor ready to go? He is. He had a, had a really good practice week this week, Bruce. Feels a lot better. Um, you know the way I am. I'm always going to err on the side of caution. I want to make sure that he feels good. He's telling me he feels good. He's back. He's, he's run hard this week, Bruce. We ran here more than we ever do because we really wanted to see how he felt. Real good in practice. Uh, so he'll be back, ready to go. Uh, David Bourne, as you know, we had talked about. David will be out probably till Idaho, our, our starting left guard, NFL prospect. Uh, really wish we had him this week with Aaron Donald, but I think he'll be back for Idaho. Uh, unfortunately, this week, Bruce, we had Eli Anderson, who we had planned on starting at right tackle, one of our incoming junior college transfers. He suffered a concussion this week, so he's out. So we got to do a little more shuffling in the offensive line. But other than that, Bruce, the other 16 we talked about last week, uh, that had the bumps and bruises, they're all healed up, excited to go. All right, your last AC oppo ACC opponent was Maryland. It was mm -hmm. not pretty. Mm -hmm. Is your team better now than they were back in early September? Yeah, I really feel like we are, Bruce. I feel like we're a more complete team. I feel like those 49 new players that came in this year uh, of our 93 understand the system. I feel like the 34 brand new players that have played for the first time, whether it be the, the 13 true freshmen, the 11 redshirt freshmen, uh, or the 10 junior college transfers, I feel like they're learning the system. Uh, you've seen us the last two games, Bruce, we're better on defense. You know, we were, a, we were a work in progress those first four weeks on defense, especially against East Carolina and Maryland. So I just feel like we've come together more as a team. Uh, the kids believe in each other. The fact that we stuck with them as a coaching staff. You know, we stuck with those kids through some hard time. We've grown from that. So I feel like we're a better team now going into Pittsburgh than we were that first game at East Carolina. Tough transition year. We'll talk more about Pitt later on. Now, the key to the Old, Defin uh, Old Dominion offense is having a smart, accurate quarterback and mm -hmm. good, fast, wide receivers. <laughs> Guys like Larry Pinkard. Chris Reckling spent some time this week with Larry, and he has his story. In a game dominated by speed, Old Dominion receiver Larry Pinkard has few equals. The redshirt sophomore is considered the fastest monarch on the team. While Antonio Vaughn may disagree, Pinkard says a foot race between the two would end up. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. 
Pinkard was a track star at Ballou High School in Washington, D.C. Last year, he was third on the team in receptions with 55 catches and seven touchdowns. This year, he already has 31 catches for a team leading 17 yards a catch. I mean, it's, it's, it's a key element to our offense because our offense is based off speed. So if you put speed on the field, I mean, it's, the, it's, it can only go up. You can do a lot with speed. I mean, you can kind of play with the defender at the same time. You can basically do what you want. Pinkard likes to use his speed to his advantage, and he knows a well-timed remark to whoever's trying to cover him can pay off in more ways than one. Now, when you talk trash to somebody, are you trying to take him out of his game? Yeah, to make him do stuff that his coach tells him not to do. And at the same time, that's hurt, that hurts the team. Does anybody take you out of your game? No. While he hopes to one day play professionally, Pinkard says he also would like to coach younger players. Because I, I think I have to stay around the game. I, my passion for the game is so high. In Norfolk, Chris Reckling for the Old Dominion Football Show. Coach Larry Pinkard, one of the many wide receivers that have stood out this season. What does he bring to your team? Good numbers, at least. Yeah, great numbers, Bruce. 31 catches, 523 yards, averaging 16.7 yards a catch, which that shows you explosiveness. A lot of guys on average around 8, 9, 10 yards a catch. He's up around 17. The other thing, Bruce, incredibly versatile. We can play him at running back. We can move him around. He had that 70-yard touchdown catch against Citadel at the end of the game. So he's done that throughout his career. Really good football player has worked hard to get where he is. You don't use numbers like that when you're recruiting wide receivers, do you? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> so look at Larry Pinkard. That's right. And Taylor Heineke. Still to come, Colby Goodwin has led the Monarchs ground attack, and he's going to need those skills if he hopes to tough it out in this week's One Minute Drill with Brian Parsons. Plus, Coach Wilder gives us his priorities of the game for tomorrow night's tough trip to pick. Coach senior running back Colby Goodwin from Hampton has been rock solid carrying the ball for you this season. But is that enough for Colby to make it through this week's one minute drill with Brian Parsons? All right, welcome back to the one minute drill. We have running back Colby Goodwin from Phoebus High School. Colby, welcome to the drill. Thank you very much for having me. You're a very mild mannered guy. <laughs> what was the last movie you cried at? Uh. I can't even remember how I cried. I can't even remember the last time I even cried. Oh, man. Come on, you could tell us. There's nothing wrong with being a sensitive man. Uh, SpongeBob. What is the worst thing about those six o'clock practices? It's early. Oh, man. Just hearing your alarm go off and you like, man, you smack your phone hard and you like, got to get up and go to practice. So you just zombie walking to the football facility. What is the ideal way Colby Goodwin spends a day off? <laughs> Not out sleeping. Catching up from the sleep that you missed for going to the 6 a.m. practice. <laughs> right. Yeah, most of the time you sleep, though. So out of all the road trips that you have coming up this year, all the big games, which city are you most looking forward to going to? Pittsburgh. You a Steelers fan? Nah. But you'll be playing in Heights Field, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty nice right there. All right, running back, Colby Goodwin. He survives the one-minute drill. Say goodbye to the Monarch Nation, Colby. Goodbye, Monarch Nation. Coach Colby is a therapeutic recreation major. Mm -hmm. Is he like the only running back you have on the team that's not <laughs> run the ball that much? It seems like Colby's been involved for four years, Bruce, and he's been such a consistent player. If you go back a couple years, Bruce, there was a point where he was the number one kickoff returner in the nation. Been a durable running back. Great in protection, Bruce. All those times that Taylor can stand back there against the blitz, Colby's almost always involved with blitz protection. He's been a very durable and good football player for us for four years. Blocking just as important as running. You're Still right. to come, the priorities of the game for tomorrow's road game against Pittsburgh. And Coach Wilder answers your questions in the Coach's Corner. They're coming up next on the Old Dominion Football Show. Time to turn it over to the fans. It's time for the latest installment of the Coach's Corner. First question, coaches from Robin in York County asks, Kicker Gerard Brown, Jared Brown rather, seems to have a mm -hmm. cannon for a leg. Do you think he's got a shot at making it in the NFL? Yeah, Jared's a, Jared's a great story, Bruce, and that uh, he joined us. He was at West Virginia, and then he transferred to us. We didn't get an opportunity there. Earns a full scholarship. You think he's got the school record for the longest field goal. 
uh, school record for most extra points, kicks the ball in the end zone. I think if he keeps working at the level he has, he's going to have an opportunity to play beyond college. Thanks for the question. That's going to be fun. Next question, Mark from Norfolk asks, if a stadium side of Powhatan Apartments falls through, is there any chance that a new stadium could possibly be built off campus? Well, as you and I both know, where there's a will, there's a way, Bruce. <laughs> They've got a backup plan. One thing that, that President Broderick and Dave Harnage, who's our chief operating officer, have done is they've made sure in every phase of that master plan, Bruce, there's, there's some backup plans. There's some plan B. So right now it looks like it's a, it's a strong possibility it could be an on-campus site, which would be great, you know, to have your stadium on campus for the students, for the community. Uh, but if not, they'll, they'll have a plan B in place. Thanks so for the question. So we get a new stadium. Yeah. <laughs> uh, final question. James from Virginia Beach wants to know, in your opinion, what Virginia University is most likely to move up to FBS next, Liberty or James Madison? Yeah, the, the school we just played, Bruce, Liberty, I, I felt like they were a very good program. I felt like other than Maryland and East Carolina, the first six we played, they were the next best. And they seem to have everything in place. They've got an excellent athletic director there. Good head coach and Turner Gill, and they want to go. They've made it very clear, Bruce. They just need a conference to take them. You can't go FBS unless a conference accepts you. So they seem like they're ready to go, and JMU is currently studying the possibility. But I think both have a, have a very strong interest in moving up. All right, Coach, what are your priorities for tomorrow's game at Pittsburgh? Yeah, number one, Bruce, we've got to be one step faster. When you play a team that's clearly better than you are on paper, you've got to find ways to be one step faster. That's the coaches in the planning, players in preparation, then working together on game day. Number two, we've got to create some opportunities in the kicking game. Now, you know what that means, Bruce. We like to create opportunities in the kicking game, so we're going to need that tomorrow night. Number three, we've got to block Aaron Donald. Number 97, their defensive tackle. Different combinations, double teams, a back. This guy's got eight sacks this year. He had two last week against Virginia Tech. He's one of the top guys in the draft coming out, so if we can do those things, Bruce, we're going to have a shot to win this game. Coach, less than a minute as you wrap up your bye week with six games left on the schedule. The important question, mm -hmm. where are we now? I really feel like we're on this trajectory, Bruce. I feel like from that first play of East Carolina, working towards that last play, the last game of the season at North Carolina, we're doing this right now. We're making great progress as a program. And as you well know, Bruce, we want to win every game this year. We're trying to win every game. I'd love to win the next six and get to 10-2. and two, But just as important as winning now, is building for the future, is getting the experience with these younger guys in the program and teaching them how to do things the right way, how to plan, how to go out on the field and execute. I feel like we're doing that right now, so we're making great progress. All right, Coach. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Old Dominion at Pittsburgh, then a week from tomorrow, ODU at Norfolk State. Coach, good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Bruce. That's a big field, big oh, time can't stage. Wait. Have a great weekend, everybody, and join us every Friday night at 1045 for the Old Dominion Football Show.